Hey guys, uh, something that was brought up the other day in Turf Pros Academy was um, cutting costs. And whenever you're starting your business, uh, keeping costs down to a bare minimum, it is a smart thing to do. Uh, I've always preached running lean and mean, and I still try to do that here at my company. But one thing you may have an issue with <clears throat> is, you, is you cannot cut costs to a profitable lawn care business. And what I mean by that is, you know that guy who just like wants to nickel and dime every little penny in his business and, and, and never wants to reinvest, never wants to hire nobody. Um, and, and really it's just, it's almost like greedy. Like you, you have to be willing to let go of money to receive money. Um, you have to be willing to reinvest into your business. And, and, it, and it's a difficult hurdle to overcome. I get it. I faced that whenever I first started. I was solo and I asked myself, can I afford a helper? Can I afford two guys? Can I afford a new truck on the road to, to, to put out another crew? But you have to be able to know exactly where you want to go with your business. And I'm not here to tell you if you should have multiple crews, if you should or shouldn't stay solo. I think you can have a successful uh, business in this industry no matter what. But one trap that I see a lot of guys do is, is they try to cut costs to a profitable business. And you can't. Eventually, you need to hire somebody to help you out, man. Eventually, you need to invest in that, that better mower that's going to help you um, do the properties faster. Eventually, you need to invest in a better truck, um, a, a, a better um, trailer setup. You need to invest in your business to get the maximum return. So again, while it is a wise thing to look at your insurance costs, your, your overhead, your rental and stuff, um, always keep debt down to a bare minimum, in my opinion. But it's, it's good to be conservative with those things. But you have to, at some point, take one step backwards to go two steps forward. Sometimes you have to take two steps backwards to go four steps forward. And you know what? Sometimes, man, you get really scared and you got to take 20 steps backwards to propel your business to where it can be, okay? Look, man, don't be cheap. Like, be conservative, be frugal, be smart. But don't be cheap with your lawn care business because you cannot cut costs to a profitable business. Okay, I know some of you are going to ask, so here's a quick tour of the inside of our house. We just finished up um, the other day, so a little messy right now, but just kind of bear with us. But uh, we're very excited to be in the house. Um, this is uh, something I'm super excited about. It was a 36-inch uh, commercial grade uh, stove uh, from KitchenAid, and I've never had an island be able to cook on so that's a, a 10 foot island and then um our living room we did the uh you know those those bean things or whatever but uh not going to show you around in rooms and stuff like that man but uh, i know that some people are going to be asking about it uh, we did do some brick floors in here uh for the entryway that turned out really really nice and here's a view back here we did open shelving turned out really nice absolute mess right now we just finished up dinner and this is eventually going to be my office space. But look, right now it's just bare. We're just now getting moved in, man. Uh, let me show you up back real quick. Yeah, there's 11 of them in there. There's Chicken Little. There's Winston. <laughs> Got Rhode Island Reds. There's Shy Guy. There's Ranger. Yeah, don't ask me how I know which one's which, but I do. This is the uh, start of our chicken coop. All right, guys, uh, here's a little video of the front of the house. We did a, a, a wraparound porch here in the front, and we did a carport off the back. And uh, all this out here where it's kind of thin, um, all this was tilled up uh, a few weeks ago, and this is gonna be seed. Uh, hopefully, this will eventually look like all this out here. This right here is uh, Argentine Bahia, and we're on four and a half acres. Uh, our property goes all the way down to the wood line. Uh, I got the pole barn back there. Uh, I'll walk you up real quick and kind of show you around. I uh, just got some landscaping done the other day, <clears throat> but I uh, only did 10 pallets of sod around the house because I really wanted <clears throat> the uh, the pasture grass look. I just, I don't know, I didn't want to look too residential, you know, because we are on a little bit of acreage out here. So we just did 10 pallets of centipede right here. And um, see, all this is starting to fill in real nice in here. But, uh, I got a, a Japanese maple here and here. I actually dug those two trees up from somebody's yard. And the story with these is, is the lady, 
she was so mad at her husband. Her husband had planted these and they was getting a divorce. I know it was horrible, but she was like, hey, I want these things out of here. And I'm like, well, hey, you know, I was very honest with her. I said, these are very expensive trees. They're, they're fairly mature. I said, you know, probably going to spend 300 bucks for a tree like this, if not more. She said, I don't care. You can cut them down, rip them out. I don't care. I want them here. My ex-husband planted them and I want them out of here. I said, okay. So I have stored those trees for two years. I'm over at my dad's place and really just found a perfect spot for them here and here. Uh, we did uh, limelights. These are white hydrangeas. This is a uh, lower pedlum. Uh, this right here is frostproof gardenias. We did a little row of agapanthus over here. I'm always so excited about the landscaping stuff. Everybody else wants to see the house. <laughs> But uh, agapantha is kind of like our, one of our little staples that we use in our landscapes designs. Um, this tree was not the right one for this. I thought this was a dwarf juniper. I ended up getting some type of like a, a sapphire cypress or something. It's going to get enormous, way too big for that spot. Um, so yeah, I still make mistakes. But uh, I'm really excited about this porch. We got to get a uh, we got to get some rocking chairs and, and all that stuff, you know, on here. But uh, another Japanese maple over here, another uh, cypress here. We're gonna replace that with, with juniper and then uh, this parsnip juniper, uh, frost proof gardenias and then more lower pedlum over here. But uh, did a nice big entryway right here and then uh, double doors. Anyways, everybody's in there eating, carrying on. So wouldn't be a good time to take y'all inside. But I was thinking about putting some rocking chairs down here and we did do uh tongue and groove ceilings all the way across this porch but okay that was a, a quick tour of the home um, i'll do a more in-depth if you guys uh want i'll show you the pole barn our garden and stuff out there um but we're very very blessed and i, I know a lot of you have been following along with the house build and then um e even from our first videos you know from whenever we first started the lawn care business um so you know it's kind of quite, quite the journey to see um if you go back and start watching some of those videos but uh very, very blessed and very thankful uh, for all of you as well. Um, leave me a comment and uh, let me know how your week is going. Y'all take care.